social media isn't just putting something up there that may or may not get views. I mean, you're reaching real people. You're connecting authentically to a crowd that only social media has made accessible. If people really relate to it, the song will carry itself. It will have its own wings. And I think it changed the entire music game, honestly. Hey all, I'm Julia Cole, and I have gotten over 100 million streams as an independent artist. It's crazy when you say it like that. <laughs> we welcome Julia Cole to Great Day, and we're reminding her that when she wins her CMAs, ACMs, and Grammys, don't forget about us. <laughs> I want to talk about your Grand Ole Opry debut. This Pick is you! Tomorrow, I'm singing on national television, on the music awards. I've had four original songs that have gone really viral and only two covers that have gone really viral. And the fact that it's been more original songs than covers is a very validating feeling as a songwriter. I started in music way later than everybody else. Like, I didn't even learn guitar till after high school. I played piano, but it was classical piano. I was obsessed with athletics growing up. The other real passion that I had was writing. I wrote a novel in high school, 500 page novel, won a bunch of poetry contests, and I've always loved words and telling stories, but I did not ever correlate that with songwriting. The weirdest transition started happening. I was in high school and my older sister and I both played on the same basketball team. Neither one of us were, were singers, but they heard us singing on the bus or in the locker room and knew that we kind of had a voice. And she and I started doing a duet national anthem before all of the basketball games we had. My volleyball coach, Coach Rotsky, she was like, hey, I see this contest the Houston Texans are doing for a national anthem singer. You should send a video in. I was like, why not? A couple months later, I was singing the national anthem in front of 75,000 people at the sold out season closer Texans Jaguars game, and there were jets going over, and I felt like Beyonce. <laughs> I was just lost in this fantasy world of performance that I'd never really been in, and uh, I got hooked. I started to enter other singing contests. I was singing the national anthem, and then I started getting paid to sing at a few of these different places. And my friends are working for $7 an hour, getting Froyo machines going, and I'm out here singing and getting paid. I was like, this is so awesome. Quite the buzz, not just around Vanderbilt campus, but around college campuses and around the country now. She's about ready to explode. So please welcome Julia Cole. Finished her on American Idol and toured with Carrie Underwood and Kenny Chesney. I felt like things were gonna start happening and then 2018 made me almost wanna quit, honestly. It was just an exhausting year emotionally, really. So music took a back seat to just trying to like get through the year. My publisher and producer and kind of my Nashville mom, Laurie White, passed away very suddenly from cancer. And the management deal that I was in, that one fell apart and that was also the year that inspired a lot of the um, breakup and cheating songs that you hear me reference said ex-boyfriend and ex-best friend in. All of that was happening like at the same time. It kind of made me really question like, what's the purpose and, and why am I doing all of this? And really what's the point in anything? And all, you know, that, that dark thought spiral. Music is what brought me out of that. My goals had a lot less to do with, oh, I've got to figure out how to make it. And it had a lot more to do with, like, how do I write a song that really captures what I'm feeling? That's the genesis of the song that end up, ended up changing everything. Deadline at the office, swear you ain't got a choice. A Friday at the ball game, catching drinks with the boys. A weekend at late. I'm so grateful. I'll be forever grateful that my first song that blew up was an original. It's a very empowered, cheating breakup anthem. It's fun, it's upbeat, but still obviously really connecting to that deep emotional spot that can't really be erased after you've been cheated on or you've experienced somebody who hurt your feelings like that. You reach for the wheel.
prior to that post, I had no followers on TikTok and I woke up to 75,000 followers, millions of views, and there were like 13,000 videos that had been made using the audio where girls and guys were lip syncing the words to the song and telling their own stories of what happened in their relationships. Like I could see all of the analytics, it was like on the day it, and it just never stopped. From that day forward, I haven't been able to play a show where there wasn't somebody there that was like, oh my God, I know that song. And they like freak out and want pictures. And I have never experienced anything like it in my life. It kind of re-motivated me that, oh, what I'm doing is actually important. It's helping people, it matters. So it really was like a game changer overnight. My ex hung the watch that I bought him on a tree branch and shot it with a rifle. Three of the four song titles that have gone really viral are Side Piece, Thank God We Broke Up, and Best Worst Ex. So there's a trend there. Sorry, not sorry, my music helped you break up with your boyfriend. <laughs> We've also had a love song that has gone really viral called Things I Can't Say. It was a duet I put out with Spencer Crandall. And Alexandra Kay is the duet partner of mine on Best Worst X, and that was one of the crazy moments. Like, song got posted, three million views overnight. Thanks, I'm Alexandra Kay. You see this girl? Best Worst X is getting added to On The Horizon. She won for favorite breakup song for Best Worst X with Julia Cole. We got it. All of it's starting to, to come together. This was the fit for the CMT Artist of the Year award show that I went to tonight. I met Cody Johnson and I was like, congratulations. I'm from Houston actually and everything you've done with the Houston Rodeo is really inspirational. He said, I've built a bridge, walk over it, carry things forward and don't let anyone tell you that you can't. And I said, yes, sir. I'm still independent. I've had a couple of offers and there just hasn't been the right partner yet. Figuring out how to play that game and remain authentic is um, the struggle of every artist in Nashville. When people don't believe in you, you've got to believe in yourself. And even if you love those people, and they love you too, sometimes no one's going to understand you the way that you do. And um, this one's called Supernova. Never underestimate what a fearless heart can take. Most of the noise you can block out, but when it's people that are close to you in your circle that you really just want to be proud of you, um, that's when you really want to actually get the number ones at radio. But the irony is, in today's day and age, you can reach 100 million people without it. It's when you think about how many people that really is, it still blows my mind. But then when you see the people in person, you start to realize every one of those views was done by a, a, a human somewhere that now has heard the song, hopefully has been impacted positively by it. Maybe we'll sing the words along with it and that's the coolest feeling and realization. hanging out with me and supporting me and listening to my music and making everything happen. I love you so much. Cool team, you're the best. <laughs>